This rocket proves nothing. You've already admitted having lost a number of your rockets. You cannot prove conclusively that another one of them didn't start that fire. Yes, I can. Oh. Are we to conclude, Mr. Hickam, that since leaving school, you've not only become an expert in rocket science, but in the field of trigonometry? I didn't say that. Obviously, I was you learned more in the coal mines than you did in high school. <laughs> Let the boy talk. Go ahead. Now, the fire was near Welch, just under three miles from our launch pad. And at the time of the fire, the best that we could do was 1.2 miles, which is exactly where we found that rocket, Mr. Turner. See, Mr. Turner, that rocket fell for about 14 seconds, which means that it flew to an altitude of 3,000 feet. According to the equation, S equals one-half A T squared, where S is the altitude, A is the gravity constant of 32, and T is the time it took for that rocket to come back down. Velocity equals acceleration times time. Well, are you following this, Mr. Turner? <laughs> all right, we're all duly impressed. But do you mind telling me if you did not start that fire, who did? If you wanna run away with me, I know a galaxy and I can take you for a ride. I had a premonition that we fell into a rhythm where the music don't stop for life. Glitter in the sky, glitter in my eyes, shining just the way you like. If you're feeling like you need a little bit of company, you met me at the perfect time. You want me, I want you, baby. My sugar boo, I'm levitating. A camera is placed 3,000 feet from a rocket launch pad. The rocket will be rising at a rate of 880 feet per second when it is 4,000 feet in the air. What is the distance from the camera to the rocket at this instance in time? Pause the video now to figure it out. Using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared in this right triangle, we have 3000 squared plus 4000 squared would equal c squared. And taking the square root of both sides allows us to find what c is equal to, and c works out to be 5000 feet, or in the context of our problem, z, the distance from the camera to the rocket, is 5000 feet. Level 1, complete. Next we will consider the angle of elevation that the camera makes when following the rocket. Level 2. As the rocket is in motion, the camera will form an angle of elevation with the ground. At the instance when the rocket is at 4,000 feet, what is the angle of elevation here? Pause the video now. In this scenario, we will need a tool connecting angles and distances in a right triangle. And that tool is trigonometry, or SOHCAHTOA. So in the scenario of our right triangle, the angle theta being our reference angle, we have three sides to this right triangle to consider, the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. And from Sokoto, we choose the tangent ratio, y over x. And then employing the inverse tangent to find the angle, the angle will be the inverse tangent of values y over x, or 4,000 over 3,000. We can simplify that by taking the inverse tangent of 4 over 3. And using a calculator, we approximate this angle to be 53.1 degrees.
So let's see if our model confirms our answer. And we see that indeed it does. Level 2 complete. Level 3. Next we would like to know how fast the rocket is moving away from the camera given it has a velocity of 880 feet per second at the instant in our snapshot. Pause the video now to see if you can figure this one out. For this we'll have to define some variables, the things that will change while the rocket is in motion. So first we'll consider our horizontal distance, x. And this distance is fixed at 3000 feet, so it is not variable, it will not be moving. However, the heights y and the distance z will be moving and changing while the rocket is in motion. Therefore, we're going to relate these two variables using the Pythagorean theorem again. And with the Pythagorean theorem and our variables, we can then use calculus to relate their rates together. So here z squared is equal to y squared plus 3000 squared. Or z is equal to the square root of y squared plus 3000 squared. We know that the rocket's rate of change, or velocity, dy dt, is 880 feet per second. That will become useful in our equation. And differentiating with respect to time implicitly, we get the related rates equation here using the chain rule to differentiate. So dz dt will equal 1 over 2 square root of y squared plus 3,000 squared times the derivative of the inside of that square root, which is 2y dy dt. Again, implicitly differentiating with respect to time. Next, we'll want to use the values from our snapshot so that we can calculate the rate at which the rocket is moving away from the camera. We know that our height, y, is 4,000 feet. And the rate of change, dy dt, is 880 feet per second. So substituting these values in to our dz dt equation, the value that we get for the rate of change of z with respect to time, and that is how fast the rocket is moving away from the camera, works out to be 704 feet per second. Now for the camera, this would indicate how fast to zoom in to keep the rocket scaled to size in view. Level 3 complete. Now for this next one, we want to calculate the rate of change of the angle of elevation while the rocket is in motion so that the camera can track the rocket as it rises. Here again, we're going to use trigonometry to do the job. So using the tangent equation and keeping 3000 feet fixed, we differentiate both sides with respect to time. On the left hand side, we differentiate the tangent of theta, we get secant squared theta d theta dt, and on the right we get 1 over 3000 dy dt. Therefore solving for d theta dt, we get cosine squared theta over 3000 equal times dy dt is our rate of change of angle with respect to time. Now, using another right triangle here, the one with the select values, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000 feet in there, we find that the value of cosine of theta is equivalent to 3 fifths. 
So we can substitute that value into our related rates equation here. And so we have, again, dy dt is 880 feet per second, giving us d theta dt is equal to 9 over 25 times 1 over 3000 times 880 feet per second, which is 66 over 625 radians per second. Or, if you like, d theta dt is approximately 0 0.1056 radians per second. And for you degree lovers out there, we could translate that, and that's approximately 6 degrees per second. So that's how fast your camera would have to elevate in order to keep its view of the rocket. Level 4 complete. Level 5. Alright, time to get a little sciency. We're going to consider the fuel and the mass of the rocket and how that affects its velocity. The initial mass of our rocket will give to be m, and the initial velocity of our rocket will give to be v. dt will be some small time increment change. And in that time change, there will be a decrease in mass due to fuel combustion, the rocket burning fuel. That little mass decrease is given by dm. Now because the rocket will be lighter, it will experience an increase in velocity, which will denote dv. Alright, so now in physics we learn that an object's momentum is defined that by that object's mass times its velocity. So momentum is about mass in motion, and we designate it with the letter p, since mass already took the letter m. So momentum P is equal to M times V, mass times velocity. Now there are some conservation laws in science that have direct correlation to symmetry in math. The conservation of momentum says that the total momentum of the system in motion must be conserved. So first, we have the rocket experiencing a change in motion, therefore a change in its mass and a change in its velocity due to the rocket burn. And if we let u be the velocity of the exhaust gas, the momentum of that is given by v minus u times dm. So putting a total momentum together, p1 and p2 must add up to the total momentum of the system. So mv is equal to m minus dm times v plus dv plus v minus u times dm. Now we can multiply out some things here, expand it out. And we'll see that some terms cancel in this equation. And doing a very physics thing right now, we can neglect the dm dv term because it is such a small contribution that it can be neglected. Putting this all together and dividing both sides by dt, we get this equation. m dv dt is equal to u dm dt. This is known as the rocket equation, and if you look at the left-hand side, it's mass times acceleration, which is the equation for force, the force of thrust. And we see that the thrust is proportional to the exhaust velocity, u, and the fuel burn rate, dm dt. A few things to note here. Using Newton's law, we also would have to think about gravity and aerodynamic effects. And here we are not taking those things into account, simply because it would complicate our situation and our calculations to get a rough estimate for the mass that we might need to produce a certain velocity. So our next move is to use this differential form to integrate. But first, a little rearrangement of the terms is in order. Accounting for a mass decrease, dm, the mass decrease, that, that quantity has to be negative, so we'll incorporate a negative sign here. Alright, so then we get the 
limits of integration for our velocity integral and our mass integral in place. Integrating the left side, we get V from V0 to V1. On the left-hand side, we get negative U times the natural log of mass, M, from M0 to M1. On the left-hand side, we get the difference of V1 minus V0. And on the left-hand side, we can use the laws of logarithms to incorporate that into the natural log of M0 over M1. And so the velocity, V, is equal to U times the natural log of M0 over M. The rocket velocity depends on the mass change while the fuel is burning as well as the rocket's thrust velocity. This allows for a rough estimate of the capacity necessary to accelerate the rocket to a specific velocity. Consider having to take a satellite into orbit and to put it into orbit, it needs to be traveling at a certain velocity. So let's let M be the mass of a nano satellite. M is going to be 50 kilograms. The thrust velocity will be 3000 meters per second. So we have a few things to consider in our rocket's problem here to put it into low orbit, we have to get it to a velocity of 7.91 kilometers per second, or 7,910 meters per second. We're gonna denote that the necessary fuel mass be M sub F. And the initial mass of our rocket will be the mass of our satellite plus the mass of our fuel. So substituting that into our velocity equation and bringing the rocket's thrust velocity to the other side, then exponentiating both sides, we get the necessary fuel mass to be m times e raised to the v over u power minus 1. Finally, given a payload of 50 kilograms and a thrust velocity of 3,000 meters per second, with a low orbit velocity necessary of 7,910 meters per second, we get the necessary fuel mass to be 700 kilograms, and this is a lower estimate for the amount of fuel necessary. Level 5 complete. Well, I hope you liked this video. Please hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell for more videos, and stay tuned for the next one.